Howdy folks, another DIY repair today to hopefully save some people a few bucks. If you hear that, number 123, it's a trouble code. I'm just going to turn this off because it's annoying as hell. So this is one of these GTO or Mighty Mule gate openers. This one's the double one. It's model number GTO 2002 XL, but the same would apply for even a single. What that code is, uh, 123, it means the master cylinder, that's this one, or the actuator. These are just a linear, long travel linear actuator. It's not seeing the uh, rotation signal being picked up and it flags that code. So we're going to open up the actuator motor and see what might be going on. I've already checked in the box. It is, it's initially sending the motor power, so I believe the motor is probably shot. So to get these Mighty Mule or GTO actuators apart, you have to take this front collar off. If you've never had it apart before, there's a seam here and you just have to cut along the sticker on both sides so you can separate the halves. These can sometimes be a real bugger to get off. Big channel locks, uh, they work. Now to get these out, uh, these they use a, a T25 Torx bit and there's six uh, screws to get out. So we'll just fast forward through this. So, that's what you're looking at. We'll just do the other five. We'll come back when they're out. Okay, once you get the screws out, this should just pop off. And then here's the bottom half. And yours has probably got the wires connected or soldered right to the motor. I've had this apart before um, to, to oil the uh, screw gear. And I took it in the house and I have put on XT60 connectors. You know. RC guy, yeah, XT60s all the way. Uh, anyways, when you're in here, check the bottom of this uh, housing. There's little drain. There's a drain hole here. I've added these ones on this side because this often water will sometimes seep past the seals into these compartments, and you don't want this thing filling up with water. Make sure the holes are clear too. You know, if you've got ants or bugs building nests in there, that that drain hole can get plugged. So we'll just put that aside. Now what we have to do is remove the uh, pin, or I've got a bolt in here in this case, on here, and then also on the gate side. Pull the pin, and then we can bring the whole arm into the shop. Just have the actuator arm mounted in the vise. Now to get the motor out, you have to take the gearbox apart. There's a gearbox in here. So to do that, we're just going to take this bracket off first. Okay, then that whole assembly will come out. So with that out, there's two Phillips screws on the back. Okay, with those out, this bracket will just come off. This is a 14 mil. Got to take that nut off. This is a lock nut. bearing should come out. You can check the bearing. Steel feels decent. Might pop the seals off and repack it with some grease. The sensor wheel should pop off. Oh, it's, you might have to pry it a bit. Be careful because it is plastic. There we go. And you can see it's got a flat on it and it fits on the flat of the shaft. There's a snap ring on here. So we'll just take that off. And there's a little washer. Take him out and then the gearbox will slide off the shaft. Now if you've noticed for any people in RC, this is just a standard RS550 motor. If you look online for replacement motors for these things, uh, you'll see them ranging in price from 40 to 100 bucks. Yeah, an RS550 motor. You can find these for under 10 bucks. I'm going to order probably from uh, Banggood because I know they can ship quick here in Canada. 
So there's just uh, these Phillips screws we have to get out. Fast forward through this. So this back should just come off. And look at all that nice yummy grease. So you just take the gears out. Two Phillips screws holding that motor in. So we'll just take those out. And there's our motor. And looks like the pinion is pressed on. Ugh, that's a bugger. Oh, so we might, that might be a showstopper if we can't get that pinion off. You can buy the gear, motor with the gear on, and yeah, then you're going to be paying the 50, 60, 70 dollars, you know, for a uh, basically a 10 dollar motor and a 2 dollar gear. But hopefully we can get that off. Um, and we're going to pull this motor apart. You have to basically grind these little tabs off to get the back plate off. Okay, to aid in taking this gear off, I'm going to heat it up. Hopefully that will expand it enough that I can use a pry bar to pry it up and off that shaft. It is going. That's well, just the grease on the gear, <laughs> flaming away. There we go. So, we've got the motor and the pinion off, and now we'll take the back of the uh, motor off and see if we can find out what's going on. And as you can see, these brushes are worn significantly, but there's still some material there. What the problem is, is if you look at the commutator on the motor here, you can see how worn it is. Uh, if you can see that lip, that's, that's the uh, diameter when it was new, so it's worn that commutator down. But even bigger of a problem is the commutator is completely gone on two of these. There's three, three of them, but two, they were paper thin and they just peeled right off. Well, one was missing and the other one just peeled off when I took the motor apart. So yeah, definitely a shop motor, 10 years old. If your gate goes and it needs a motor, you don't have to spend $100 on a new one. You can get these really cheap. But there's something you have to know before you can order a new one, and that's the number of turns. This again is why I, I'm such a big promoter of RC hobbies, because it teaches you so much. You know, a lot of people wouldn't even know that this is an RS 550 motor unless they were in the hobby and these are also what's uh, a lot of cordless drills will have the same motor in it I'm going to show you how to determine what kind of motor to order here. What we're looking at here is I've cut the coils of the motor up here with my Dremel and The reason I did that was to count how many wires are in this bundle or They call it turns how many turns are in the motor and you need to know that so you order the order the right type of motor or the right number of turns motor that will dictate the speed and the torque of the motor so you want to order the same type of motor that came out of it so i counted all these up and this is a 29 turn motor so when we order our new rs 550 motor we'll have to order um, you know a 29 turn make sure it's a 29 turn and i'm actually going to order two motors because if this one's this bad we know the other one's going to be shot here pretty quick as well. When going to order your replacement RS550 motors, there's a few dimensions that uh, are rather critical that you should make sure that uh, the motor you're ordering has. Of course, the first one is the shaft diameter. Most RS550 motors uh, have a shaft diameter of 3.17 millimeters, but definitely confirm that. Another important one, uh, you know, the length and the overall thickness isn't that big of a deal because as you saw there's quite a bit of real estate in that uh, housing but just for curiosity's sake if you're wondering uh, if you take the, um, the metal shielding around the side of it we're looking at about 38 millimeters in width and the length of the can is about 58 millimeters but another distance that is important is how long that shaft is because of course the uh, pinion gear is press fit onto that, so I'll just give you that real quick. It's about nine and a half, ten millimeters long, 
The little uh, bearing housing on the top is about 13 millimeters wide. That's quite important because it fits in that gearbox. It's pretty tight tolerance in there. And just if you're wondering what the distance from the base or the top of the motor to the top of the shaft is, it's about 13 millimeters. Oh, and the other one is spacing for the uh, the mounting screws. And most RS550s are 25 millimeters, center to center. Uh, that's pretty much what we're seeing here. They use an M3 metric uh, screw in them. Quickly show you, I'm on Banggood's website, just did a search term for 550 motor, and this is what comes up. I've already looked through a lot of these. As you can see, you can get them pretty cheap. 743 is the cheapest one. The dimensions are okay. This blue one, the dimensions are okay on it as well, as are they on this black one. However, these two, it doesn't show the number of turns, whereas this uh, DI or D1RC one, you can specify either 21 turns or 29 turns. So this is the one I'm going to order, $13.99 US, so it's a little bit more than those cheapy $10 ones, but we know we've got the right number of turns on it. I'm just going to add two to the old cart, and once they uh, are shipped out and come in, we'll get on to replacing them. In under a week, our two RS550 motors have arrived from Banggood. They seem Pretty decent. Again, 29 turns that we had determined, so that's quite important. However, the shaft has also got a flat in it. The original didn't. So when that was pressed on to the original, there was a lot more holding force. I'll probably just put it on with a 648 retaining compound, which will hold it nice and tight to that shaft. I may end up drilling a hole in the uh, base of this pinion, thread it out to put a little um, set screw in there to hold against the flat. And the only other thing we have to do on the motor is uh, take the diode off of the old one and put it on the back here. This, by the way, if you want to order a new diode or if yours ever went out, it's a P6KE16CA. This is one of these TVS diodes, a transient voltage suppression diode. And its function is um, to clip or, you know, um, eliminate any big inductive voltage spikes uh, when the motor, when the power on the motor is turned off and the winding and the field and the windings collapse, you get this big uh, voltage spike that can take out the MOSFET and that's what that little diode is protecting um, against is that voltage spike. And these are non-polarity sensitive so it doesn't matter which way you get them, uh, solder them back on. So we'll get take, we'll take care of that, we'll get the pinion on and then I guess the only other thing is, uh, before we mount it back in the gearbox, we should probably clean the gearbox out and re-grease it. My whole drilling and tapping uh, was more or less a disaster. This is such hard steel on these pinions that uh, the hole was drilled, but I couldn't get my tap to even touch this. So the tap was starting to bite and twist. I was... Uh, I was fearful I'd just snap the tap off, so we're just going to have to be relying on the press fit and Loctite 648. So I've cleaned both uh, the inside of the pinion and the shaft of the motor with brake clean, so it's uh, there's no grease or anything on it. I'm just going to apply the 648 retaining compound just onto an awl and I'm applying it inside of the pinion and this way any that oozes out I'll put some on the shaft too but if I put it all on the shaft you risk the 648 uh, any excess running down into that uh, bearing and we've got the diode soldered on I'm just going to make sure to have the end of the motor shaft resting on our little vise here so when I'm tapping this on all the force is going direct through the shaft. A couple of things of note now that this is all cleaned out. The two shaft bushings, one goes in the end plate, one goes in this housing uh, they were really loose in here, 
and you can tell this one has been rubbing and this gate opener when it gets cold some days it'll just scream and I'm thinking that's what the problem was probably this bushing was rotating in the housing here so I'm going to glue them in with a 648 retaining compound and the only other thing of note there's two little washers um, that go on this large shaft one goes on the bottom and then the gear would go on and then the other one would go on the top so just remember that when we were putting it back together that pinion was sticking up quite a bit so you can get it on there uh, further and then of course more of that shaft is pressing into that pinion gear so right now I've got it at you know 1.4 millimeters so you could have a one millimeter gap in there and you'd still have lots of teeth biting that gear. I'm just using regular bearing grease uh, you know get it on the shafts first so those gears are uh, rubbing on or rotating on grease and then just you know fill up all the teeth you know, just put some on the pinion as well and then we'll screw the motor in and the motor attachment screws just make sure you have thread lock on them Just, you know, if you want, you can put more grease in there, but you don't need tons. And put the back back on, and we'll get this thing buttoned back up. So I've got the gearbox all buttoned back up. Now we'll put it back onto the arm. There we go, it's all back together, bolted together. Uh, we'll get the other one together, and hopefully the next time we are looking at this, we'll see the gates working. Oh, and one thing, I haven't hooked up the wiring to the motor. I'm not too sure which direction the motor turns. So I'm just going to use some alligator clips to test it first. You know, I'll hook it up to the, uh, the wires in the uh, box there to the motor, see which polarity goes where, and then I can figure out, you know, which of these is, uh, uh, you know, which way to hook the wires back up in the box so it's opening and closing in the right direction. You could also switch the wires around, obviously, in the control unit, but uh, I don't want to do that. I'd rather have them at the right polarity here at the motor. Both opener arms have got the new uh, motors in. Everything's back together. Let's see how she works. Hopefully good for another 10 years. Cheers folks, happy repairs.